Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. This is your host, Lorraine Neidhart. Oops, I'm a minute or two late this morning, but here I am. My Facebook is working, everything is working, and I am back uh, talking all about Venus and what we are looking at, which is always so interesting, how uh, synchronicity works. We're talking about the queen, Persephone the queen. Persephone is the maiden who goes into the underworld. She is kidnapped by her uncle, Hades. Uh, her mother, Demeter, uh, seeks her and stops everything from growing. And uh, one thing that is not talked about much is that she comes up queen, sovereignty. So what did she learn in the underworld that would be good for all of us to learn in some way, particularly these days. Uh, Everybody's kind of looked up from their cell phone and realized that they have a life that they have to uh, be part of and work with and find creative ways. And uh, I think the rage and the anger, certainly here in New York City, uh, is it's an important energy But how not to just rant and rage and lose your authority, lose your Saturn, lose your uh, authenticity. See, the thing uh, about rage and anger, because Trump is going to be a lot of people's shadow. And I know that's a little hard to take, but it would be amazing if we could say, okay, what is it that, or it could be Hillary, too. I mean, either way, or it could be your next-door neighbor. When there is such a strong reaction, there's shadow material. He may be the shadow of America. And that's what everybody is looking at. Now, how are we going to work with that one? The only way we work with that, or anything that has to do with the shadow, is know thyself. Know your own shadow. Know your own power struggles or lack of. Powerlessness is a misuse of power. So, anger, if we could not strike out, nor in, which becomes depression, but through using this energy, using outrage. Persephone is drawn into the underworld. Well, certainly the great Mamu, uh, uh, Demeter, is furious. But little is known, actually, about Persephone. And I think, or I know, uh, that it's a wonderful opportunity to begin to fantasize. Fantasies, I was uh, looking at Jung's Red Book, uh, and he talks about uh, Philemon. Now, Philemon was a, a figure within his psyche, that he discovered an an act of imagination. He writes here, Philemon and other uh, figures of my fantasies brought home to me the crucial insight that there are things in the psyche which I do not produce, but which produce themselves and have their own life. And that's true of all of us. And very often we we don't see it. It's called an event. So psychologically, Philemon represents superior insight, because that's his wise old man, right? Or wise young man, because he doesn't have to be old. All my works, all my creative activity, 
has come from this initial fantasy uh, and dreams, which began in 1912. So, a hundred years ago, Jung was making these discoveries, as the ancient Greeks made these great discoveries and used um, myths. So, Persephone, as mistress of the dead, what, what's that? What's that mean to oneself? How do we? Because these are teaching. I know we can, we can this, uh, certainly all of von Franz's work on, on um, evil and shadow and fairy tales. And these are all incredibly important books. Uh, to be reading, they're not an easy read. It takes a little getting used to, uh, but the but they're 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 it's like code for your own psyche and uh, what you don't understand um, with the conscious mind. You'll have a dream, and then you'll write that dream down because dreams tell us what we don't know about ourselves, and they always guide us well. So in this inner world, when she walks amongst the dead, what could she be learning? What would be going on there? Well, one of the things that we we begin to understand is that um, Zeus, you know, the 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 father of light. Uh, the king of the gods uh, is not her savior. It's not her true savior. He he doesn't help. I mean, eventually he he um, he brokers a deal to get her out of the underworld, and but she has to go back uh, seasonally. But it's his dark brother Hades. So it's a little shock when we think. You know, light's got it all. It doesn't. So the wisdom of this extraordinary myth is that the source of Persephone's transformation comes from beneath, comes from the lower depths of the soul, not from the higher reaches of spirit. So that's something to look at. So the things that so what would that look like in, in one's life? It's like the things that come from the shadow. Okay, we need that energy. There is tremendous creative force to help us break through when used properly. Another thing that happens when she's in the underworld, she learns how to think. She learns how to survive. She observes and she watches and she grows in the dark. Like all things that grow from the earth, they grow in the dark. The diamond is also made in the dark. So there's great truth and wisdom in the things we can't see, which is why rather than flying off as if one knows, or worse, taking the opinion of someone else as your own and not feeling your way through, thinking your way through, asking your body what it feels, asking dreams to help you, meditations, active imagination, art, dance, hopping, whatever it is. That's Stills you enough to reflect. Because we're going to need a lot of reflection. And it would behoove many people to make a conscious choice and choose wisdom. Not just knowing, but wisdom. Earned wisdom because we've been going through a lot of maturity, a lot of growing pains. 
and we can just go through growing pains and stay terminally depressed and brokenhearted or mean-spirited or unconscious when, in fact, this is a call, an absolute call. I would go as far as saying it's a global call to consciousness. How do we work with this? We work by knowing the nature of. So, you know, one of Persephone's um, wounds uh, or, or the Persephone woman is sometimes they just hold on to being the loving mother, self-sacrificing and loving and giving all or uh, because they make marvelous healers and therapists and social workers and they are incredible rescuers and very often burn out because the long suffering of these um, gifts that they can have is they don't know how to go into the underworld, go into the dark to get the energy. That's where it's needed, into the unknown parts. So Persephone, like all heroes, she's got to heal herself. And of course, it's not easy. She's got to go in there and understand her nature. What makes her tick? What's her authority? Or what is her sovereignty? Sovereignty means self-rule. When one has sovereignty, we know ourselves and we live our life according to our own internal sovereignty. Not the crazed out queen that's uh, getting everybody to serve them. That's one form of a queen. But the queen, the true queen, she becomes sovereign of the underworld. She knows the way of death. She knows the way. She helps the dead transform. And I'm sure many, many other things, whether it's uh, testing those who've been to the underworld, wise testing, not terrifying. We're not looking for you know, a, a zombie movie. We're looking for the wisdom. And what goes on in the parts of us that don't know. And very often the thing we fear the most has the greatest wisdom. Now, it may come in a language you don't particularly understand. Let's say, for instance, a nightmare. A nightmare is uh, always fascinating because a nightmare is not meant to scare you. What the nightmare is meant to do is bypass the ego. It's like a code. It doesn't want the ego to play around with the message. So it gives us a nightmare that we need to decode uh, without our ego that says, oh, no, no, it's this, it's that. So it can say can be saying, you know, you need to be aware, or this should frighten you, or what you're about to do should frighten you, or uh, someone that you're trusting because you don't want to take on the responsibility of your own decisions and your own errors and your own mistakes, definitely going to misguide you. And on top of it, you still got to come back and... and um, have another encounter until you earn. So the wound of Persephone is that she can be the eternal sacrificial victim, which is the complete opposite of the queen. She is not a sacrificing queen. She learns the ways of the underworld are perfect. So, although she fought, Persephone fought, she still ate the pomegranate seeds. So when you eat something from the underworld, 
anything. You've got to return. Which means if you take in anything, let's say even in a uh, a depression, you then return to the depression through your dreams, through your art, through your creativity. So you can you you go back and forth. You don't have to stay in that state, but you need to work with it because there is great wisdom. It's just a shock to the world of light. And light can be blinding. We don't even see it. We're just pure light. And so we don't see what's coming. Or we just, of course, want the best and hope for the highest. But not just one-sided. It's like when people pray, which is a very important uh, activity, you don't busboy the divine. I want this and I want that, or smite my enemy, or... You know, that's half. We present both sides, whether it's to your angels or directly to the divine or whoever you're into. Both sides. We see it this way and this is this is the other side. So whatever it is that is just and true and right for all involved and yourself, Sometimes, or, or at least if we can't change the situation, let's pray for insight and let's pray for wisdom. And let's pray for that the highest and wisest decisions or activities happen in life or that we creatively find ways to stop something. Those are the things we learn in the underworld. So Demeter is, uh, you know, that's that's our baby. That's our baby girl. And also, this is also the story of the triple goddess, the virgin mother crone. Because Hecate, the the wise aspect that uh, Persephone eventually becomes, she becomes the wise crone. So in the in the world, in the Persephone world, or if we are uh, predisposed to Persephone uh, myth within our psyche, we need to be careful because. Very often the the Persephone woman uh, flirts with death. It's close. So instead of having a conscious relationship with it, it's something that can overwhelm her. And but it, she's always present. So then she thinks, well, you know, um, becomes obsessed with death or or fantasies of suicide or uh, that stuff. Instead of saying, wait, 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 wait. That you know, we we can that part of us can be half in love with, uh, with death. That's also what great poets discuss and what uh, artists create. What is that unknown? It becomes a creative muse, not something that's going to take us over. So she becomes sovereign of these things. And uh, there was one point which, you know, Jung once pointed out that there are two major forms of uh, spiritual pride or inflation. And so we're all familiar with the first, the inflation of the the hero, the guru, the world savior. And we all know and distrust these kind of, this puffed up rhetoric. But the less easy to see through is the pride of the sufferer and the martyr and the victim. Just as the hero endlessly demands and gets praise and support and from unreflecting bystanders, operative word unreflecting, 
we need to learn to reflect. So the victim draws from the natural wells of sympathy and pity by his or her plight. What could be more manipulative and in the end, more self-serving? So it's the tyranny of, of, of the crippled that weaken the strong ones. So we are we, the royal we, as in life and the world, need to be aware. Terrible things do happen and they will continue to happen. But you don't stay in the situation. You see it for what it is. You mourn it. Uh, you get angry and you create so what has to die is also uh, our innocence. Innocence is not going to get you through an entire life. There is a place for innocence. And just like a, uh, Hillman wrote a wonderful article on betrayal. Or he states that you know betrayal is a is an upgrade when we get betrayed, and of course we can only get betrayed by those that we care for or love. I mean, strangers, it's not a betrayal; it's just rude, right? But so then, when, then we look for where and where did I need my innocence broken apart so that I could see what was going on, or could see that this was not my friend or that this person was not going to help during uh, a difficult time in your life. They may send you an email, but they're not going to show up at your door and help you. They're too busy. So what Persephone begins to work with and understand is her own dark side. The part she doesn't know. She marries death. And that's something right there. Hades is death. Right? Um, and so she begins to understand the mysteries of life and death and what goes into that. And we all need to start to understand that. Life and death, beginnings and ends. What is what is it about? I don't know if uh, any of you know um, Dion Fortune. Dion Fortune was a very famous occultist. Actually, she was my teacher's teacher, and uh, so I kind of learned through that um, branch. And in her book Psychic Self Defense, which was the first I guess, book on psychic self defense. And it's very, very powerful, and it's really quite good. Uh, it's, uh, once again, it's not an easy read because um, in those days it was, uh, you know, it was all about clairvoyancy and black magic plots, and and uh, which is still very, very real today. We don't call it that. It's still, that's what envy and, and evil is not wishing the best and we ourselves have to beware we need to understand what it's about so we don't innocently fall into the dark arts thinking that we're helping that's also where the prayer comes in that we do both sides or we could even say well this is what how I see it this is how my enemy sees it or this is how another side sees it and uh, that would be interesting you don't show why you're doing it because that would be very hard. I see it in this way. My enemy sees it or the opposite. That is creating the conflict. There'll be no conflict without its opposite. you got to remember, you're the other person's enemy too. So how would you see yourself as, as an enemy to that person? Now, that doesn't mean that it's true. But it does mean that that person has hired you to be their enemy. And because they're trying to figure out some shadow aspect 
that's unbearable. So you may have a thread of it in you, and so you carry that. If we really truly understood projection, there'd be a hell of a lot less anger, because you would see, oh, this person wants me to wear this ridiculous outfit, and uh, because I don't understand uh, projection, I'll wear it. So if you want to go around like a bunch of clowns, yeah, you can go do that. Or you can say, well, where could this be true? To at least allow that to live. How could this become a creative act? Because part of maturity, part of sovereignty, is being able to carry the projection, but also know not through denial. Because there, you can say, you know, there is a place in me that this could be true. Not at this time. But I'm also being warned that it's around somewhere. Within. So you look at it. You don't become it. You observe it. You work with it. Once again, you write, you dance, you do. So, Persephone, she befriends the dark angel. Dark is not negative, it's just dark. This very interesting book, also called The Dream in the Underworld, by James Hillman. And uh, he writes uh, beautifully about and provocatively, as he writes all the time. He's a very provocative dude. Was. He passed on a few years ago. Uh, he writes about the underworld and the unconscious. So it's quite interesting that we need to become aware of what goes on about what we don't know. And we will continue this. Because Persephone is a queen in training, as we all are in some way. Also, there is a, a fun book. It's called The Queen of Myself by Donna Hens, H-E-N-E-S. And uh, it's uh, stepping into her sovereignty in midlife. And it's a, it's a, it's a lovely book. So, till next week. Bye-bye. Napa Know How. A Napa guy knows more isn't always better. Unless we're talking about full-size vans. These beasts do more than get you from A to B. They have so much space a man can live in it. With shag carpeting, waterbed, and a sweet lava lamp, these mobile abodes have all the comforts of home. With quality parts and plenty of Napa know-how, you can keep the original tiny house running longer, stronger. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how.